Hey foodies, this is your girl Nick. Um, I am reporting here from foodie headquarters. I look a hot mess, uh, but I figured I'm doing a poverty challenge, so where is there room for vanity in this? Besides the fact that if I go upstairs to go and get things for me not to look a hot mess, I'm very likely not to come back down and do this video, and I really do want to journal this experience. Okay, so, day two. Day two was a lot better than day one in a lot of respects. Uh, number one, uh, as I predicted yesterday, I sort of broke with the obsessive food thoughts. I didn't think about food nearly as much today. Um, I did think about food, but I didn't think about it nearly as much. Um, I also didn't experience appetite quite the same way, but that could be a good or a bad thing. It could be good in the fact that I got through the day. And it might have had something to do with the fact that I managed to work three meals <laughs> into my plan today. Yay! Um, but, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, it could also have something to do with something very dysfunctional that happens in my brain. It um, was one of the worries I had when I started uh, thinking about doing this challenge, which is, um, and I'm sure there are plenty of post-ops out there that are like me in respect to the fact that uh, not eating can become as addictive as eating. Um, for me, uh, I detest hunger. I don't like the feeling of hunger. It's uncomfortable. Um, so today when I awaken, I wasn't really that hungry. You know, there's something about the act of chewing that really makes you remember food and it makes your whole system and your stomach and everything wake up. I'm sure there's like a biological, biochemical explanation for that, but, um, I just know that chewing things and eating things makes my stomach remember uh, that it wants to be eating, and then I get all obsessive again. So that was really sort of the source of me um, not wanting to eat. But I did find myself at several points of the day not wanting to have a meal when I was supposed to have my three meals uh, because I didn't want to start up the process of being hungry or wanting more than what was in my bowl or, you know, obsessive food thoughts and things like that, which took me straight back to the beginning of my uh, post-op experience. That was the thing that I hated about restriction. I hated the fact that food was over so fast and it was over before the point where my brain was ready for it to be over and I would think about food until my next meal and you know that's not a great place to be. For those of you who've experienced that, I understand that's not a great place to be. Uh, you don't want to be thinking about food all the time. You would love to think about something else but your brain is just latched onto that food. So, um, I found myself sort of resisting eating. I did eat my three meals. Um, I actually logged my three meals. My calorie totals the last two days are, you know, somewhat alarming. Uh, I think today I got 450 calories. And yesterday it was a little higher. So, um, yeah, don't try this at home and don't do it for a prolonged period of time. Weight loss is not my goal here. Like I said, I'm not trying to cut back. I'm not doing a substitute for the five-day pouch test or anything like that. Um, so what else, what else, what else? Um, I'm still kind of tired. <laughs> I was tired throughout the day, but it occurred to me today that that might also be because I have a little bit of a cold and ear infection sort of thing going on, which begs the question of why I chose this week to do it, but I had already planned to do it this week, and I don't know, in my head, I have this thing about feeling like a quitter, so usually I will kill myself to uh, uh, fulfill a goal rather than feel like I quit. This is another thing I need to work on, and uh, I'm in the market for a new therapist, and we will talk about that. Um, I just got back from doing a walk. I walked three miles, amazingly. Um, I didn't think I was going to be doing that much exercise during this challenge because, you know, you tell yourself in your head, oh, I don't have enough calories for exercise. But um, I'm four years post-op, and I'm here to tell you that my body fat percentage is supportive of me doing exercise no matter what it is that I'm eating. Um, so I got my butt out there, and I walked. And it wasn't that difficult. I walked after my evening meal mostly because I just wanted to get out of the house. There's food in the house. I can't eat it. And that's going to either <coughs> piss me off or um, cause me to eat it. So neither of which is a scenario that I wanted to go to. So that's my sort of post-op impressions of today. My my sort of global world view impressions of this today. It's interesting um, in trying to figure out 
what it is, you know, sort of contemplating what it is that makes me as a person who isn't wealthy in America so much better off than somebody uh, that's in a developing country. And at my job, we talk about um, the concept of people having assets a lot. Um, and it's a concept that's pretty easy to understand, even though I really just fully wrap my head around what it means. You know, downstairs in my basement, tom as of tomorrow, my stepfather is delivering my washer and dryer. I, I own a refrigerator. I own a car. Um, unfortunately, I still own a house. I'm trying to work on that. <laughs> um, but it, if push came to shove, these are all things I could sell if I had no food. I could sell my car and buy some food. I could sell my washing machine and buy some food. I could uh, start washing clothes for other people and make some money to buy some food. So these are our assets that I have um, to be able to use if I needed to. And people around the world simply don't have that. Uh, in cases of an emergency, in cases of a drought, in cases of a famine, uh, those are the first things to go. Um, if you have livestock, you sell them. Or, you know, I imagine some people eat them. <laughs> but um, uh, either way, the livestock is gone. That's worth money. Uh, not necessarily having anything else of value. What do you sell? How do you get food? Um, so that's been on my mind a lot today. Just, you know, continuing to feel very blessed about what I have and continuing to feel very, very empowered that as each day of this challenge goes by, it brings me closer to the end of this challenge. Um, and also the feeling that, you know, whether you're Christian, you're Jewish, you're Muslim, you're, you know, atheist or whatever, if you believe in humanity, um, you should be pretty restless to the fact that there are people in the world who are encountering this dollar fifty a day or whatever equivalent it is in their own country. There, it's, it's just a shame on humanity that there is so much food in the world and there actually is enough food in the world to feed every single person in the world and not everybody has access to it. So um, that's my little PSA for today is that we should all be restless about that. And, and insofar as you can help, I think everybody should help. Um, you know, check out uh, an organization that does relief and development work that helps uh, farmers grow food and access water and, you know, earn income and things like that. Uh, buy fairly traded items uh, to make sure that the farmers and artisans who made the goods that you're making are receiving a fair price and earning an income to support their families. Uh, things like that um, are pretty painless and really do go a long way. So anyway, this is day two, me signing out. I'm about to go take my vitamin. Oh, I just wanted to give a shout out to my friend Peter who was worried about whether or not I was staying hydrated. I'm not tipping this cup uh, because if you guys saw the quick decaf review, that did not end well. But please trust and believe that this is water in my little mug. I've been drinking it all day. I have been staying hydrated. Uh, that's one thing that I, I have been very passionate about throughout this whole process. So, anyway, I'll report back tomorrow. Sorry about the length of this. I really meant to make it only five minutes, but then I got all preachy. Um, so, I will report in tomorrow, and I hope you have a lovely evening. Good night, sweeties.